in the qualifiers, how happy were you with the campaign that uh, Martin O'Neill and, and Roy Keane put out there? It's a relief, I'd have to say, uh, towards the end. Um, I always felt it was going to be close. You know, some, there was some quality in that group. Wales, obviously after the back of the Euros, doing so well, the team spirit and keeping Chris Coleman. Um, obviously Gareth Bale and Ramsey, uh, the team spirit they had. I always knew that they were going to push. But um, the way we started the campaign, it was obviously very, very strong. So I thought, I, th I thought it would, it wouldn't be as, mm, it wouldn't be as easy when we won them first few games. I knew it would get tougher and tougher. But you know, I, I thought we would have an outside chance of qualifying, which obviously is where it is. But I did actually think Wales might just pip us to that playoff position. So you know, looking looking back, I'm probably happy. And when the draw was made and Denmark came out. Yeah. I know a lot of people from, uh, from the north of Ireland, they all wanted Denmark. So we, were you happy with the draw? No, the no. I, um, I always, I always think, you know, the team that you want because you look at the stats and you think Denmark and you don't know, you don't know a lot of the players. You know, there's obviously Ericsson's playing in there, but other than that, you wouldn't really, they're not household names or big names as such. And you, you kind of think, oh, that's, that's the one I want. You know, I always, I always felt, that if we'd have got Italy, I just think the glamour of the game, mm. I think it might have, it might have just thrown that little bit extra into our performances. Um, and Italy, for some reason, haven't qualified, well, for a reason. And, you know, I just think they're there for the taking. And I just think it being a real big glamour game would have upped the ante, really. And I wanted Italy. I just thought it might have been just a better game for us. Um, I think Denmark. I think they can, they can hurt you, Denmark. You know, you look at their qualifiers. Yeah, it wasn't a great start. Very, very strong towards the end. It was five or six wins on the bounce, and then they drew. I think against Romania last game, didn't they? But you know, they eventually finished second. Lots of points, but behind Poland, do they consequently beat at home in Copenhagen four 0 So you know, they know what they're doing. Denmark are well organised. And my experience of playing against Scandinavian teams is, is they're tough and they're physical and they're very, very fit. And um, they've got goals in their team and creativity. I mentioned before Ericsson. So, you know, we have to keep this tie alive by getting something in Copenhagen. You probably got it the right, the right way around as well, didn't you? Playing there first. You'd always want to play um, at home second. Um, you know, I've played in lots of qualifiers, um, European games as well at club level. You know, getting, getting the second leg at home is, is a slight advantage if you're still in the tie. You know, if's a big word, you know, and I've I've had a few. Certainly Liverpool in Europe, we lost we lost three to Paris Saint Germain, three to Strasbourg. We got it back to three two at Anfield, you know, it's it's a tough ask if you go three behind. Two, you can turn that around. One, you're very much in it. You get an away goal, you're very, very much in it. Um but three, you just you're struggling and you know, it's it's as I mentioned it before, you've got to stay in the tie. Was the World Cup qualified with Mick? I'm trying to remember. I've done it? lots. My first one was Holland with Jack, 96 Euros. Um, we lost at Anfield. Clive, I think, got two or three on the night. Um, I lost Turkey, but they took us to Bursa, which was a million miles from Istanbul. Mm. They knew what they were doing. I lost to Belgium. Um, won against the RAN. That was um, the one, wasn't it, that, to the, Japan the and Korea? Nick. Yeah. Honest to God, I mean, I've done a, I've done a lot of fo in football, as in you know, played cup finals and stuff like that. But that day we qualified, can't tell you. It was an unbelievable feeling. Just that, because I think people, I think people think, you know, you just turn up for a World Cup, you get invited, but you don't. It's two years of hard work. It's two years of travelling, you know, ups and downs with emotions, um, you know, tough, tough games, going back to domestic football, having to pick up from there and carry on. It's tiring. And, um, and your massive reward is obviously, if you qualify, is getting to that, the greatest stage in, in the world, isn't it? The World Cup. So, yeah, the very, the very, very emotional occasions, playoffs, they're not the place to lose, but if you win, you remember it forever. Is this Roy's, Roy Keane's debt of gratitude for dropping off from Japan and Korea, do you think? That, think if, he cares. if he got him to the World Cup? I don't think he cares. I think he's got his opinion on why he wanted to leave. Um, he will stand that, by that opinion as long as ever and um, 
you know that that incident we all we all see it through different eyes for you know I see it through my eyes and my take on it is completely different to say Gary Green's or Shea Givens or Gary Kelly's you know we all see it through our own eyes um, and Roy will see it through his and he'll stand by his decision I'm just you know as I've got older a little bit wiser um, more forgiving probably I probably there's a slight sympathy towards Roy in that in that circumstance when I look back because arguably he was the best midfielder in the world at that time you know Spain weren't the Spain you know that they become Brazil you know the, that was the it, frustration though wasn't it yeah he was a he was the top of his game mm. you know and and if you you wanted a midfielder any country wanted a midfielder in in the center it would they, they all would have picked Roy Keane mm. so for him to go home yeah it was it was very disappointing but my sympathy comes for that he that he missed that World Cup at a time when he was the best player in that position and it was his stage and he missed that so but that's something he has to deal with and I wouldn't say knowing Roy's personality that there's any debt of gratitude he, he would feel he owes to the Republic no not at all how do you see that the whole thing working with him and Martin O'Neill because chalk and cheese yeah to I, be honest I think you know you look around the dressing room and all them players would have grown up as probably Roy is their hero um, so in that presence in the dressing room, him being in that dressing room will, will add something. You know, they'll, they'll all listen, they'll all look up to him, they'll all um, admire what he's done as a, as a player. And, you know, if he needs to get a response out of them, he, he will know how to do it and they'll respond. Whereas Martin is a ve much more of a, a man manager, he'll have an arm around the shoulder. Um, I wouldn't say he's probably a Rafa Benitez where he's tactically astute. He'll set them up in the way that he feels will get a result. And because of his man management style, he'll get a response from the players on the pitch. Where Roy, I think, will be a bit more vocal. And it will be that good cop, bad cop in the dressing room. Which Roy, obviously, is the bad cop. Well, he said it was bad cop, bad cop, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not so, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> or mad cop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Martin's more mad cop, yeah. But, you know, I'm a big believer in man management. So I think it's the thing that, you know, sometimes as you look at managers some of them lack and wonder why they don't win anything and um, you, you look at the greatest managers around Shankly Paisley Ferguson you know you even look I go back to 96 when England possibly should have won the Euros Teddy Venables um, Jack Charlton you know, closer to home they've all had their own success in their own way and I think that's man management what do you think the appetite is uh, over in Ireland for this because obviously it Love the rugby, love the GAA. From the country? Yeah, what's, what's, oh. what's the football and appetite they, for this? And they embrace football? it. Obviously, rugby probably had a little spell where it surpassed the football, whereas we were always on top. We were always the, the sport, the greatest interest. Obviously, with the Halen and the Gaelic alongside that as well. But, you know, success brings the, the interest, really, doesn't it? And we were very, very successful and very accessible to the public as well. We always went out and did things. We always went and met the public. We always had a great relationship with them the fans always traveled well and always supported us and were totally indebted to that and we feel sometimes that they got us over the line you know in tough tough games Amsterdam Arena Portugal Cyprus you know I mentioned Cyprus because it was a very tough game but they'd come in the thousands and helped us out you know in Greece you know Iran there wasn't a lot in Iran but in the stadium but you know they made their presence felt so you know we owe a debt of gratitude to the fans and uh, you know going up to the the modern modern times it, it's been very tough for them because we haven't had a great deal of success a couple of euros on the trap uh, martin's obviously got us to one which was a more successful than traps campaign which was a disaster to be fair mm. um but the interest is slowly coming back and you know for these games without a shadow of a doubt the fans will be right behind the team but i have to keep going back you know if we come home from denmark three or four down you know that becomes a mountain to climb and one i don't even think the fans will be able to help us keo mccarthy yeah they're out. Where, how do they set up? Going over to there to come away with a result to then, you know, play to your strengths. I think the blueprint was was the Wales game. Um, I think it'd be fair to say I don't think anyone really called the result. I felt a draw at best was going to be where we where we got. Um, but Martin set up very defensive and played on the break and. Um, I'd have to say on the night, I thought we defensively we were, we were outstanding. And we've got that in our locker. And we've always had that as a, as a country. We've always had that team spirit, that dig in. You think of some of the greatest games we've ever had where we've had to hold on to something. 
that's when the fans pay their part and where the players really dig in, roll their sleeves up and, and hold on to it and it certainly played out that way. It wasn't the most charismatic of performances but it was the job that we needed to do and we, and we got it and you know we popped up, we had two or three chances and we popped up with the goal and once we'd scored that you, you, there was only one winner, we were never going to concede the goal so um, it's going to have to be that kind of performance away from home, you know we're going to have to shut up shop you know, I'd come back with a nil-nil. I'd go there very, very defensive, you know, deep, don't give them any space, uh, be well organised, be very compact, you know, and deal with the ball when it comes into the box. And we always say, don't give away silly free kicks when you've got someone like Eriksson over the ball. Mm. You know, we've seen over the past year, 18 months, the quality he possesses from dead ball situations, whether it's a cross or a, or a shot on goal, he, he can be clinical. So, no silly free kicks. Um, and obviously get back to Dublin, you know, nil-nil. 1-1, one, 1-0 one, one defeat, we're right in it, it's game on. Can he do it? Can he get it over the line, do you think? Of course they can do it, I mean, football, I mean, you've seen no football as much as I have, it's like, you know, anything can happen. Listen, I played in that Liechtenstein game where we went to Liechtenstein and we battered them for 94 minutes. I think their manager cleared one off the line at one point. We had the bar, <laughs> the post, the keeper was unbelievable, they just got 11 men behind the ball, we just could not score against tiny Liechtenstein, we'd run out 0-0. So, uh, Ever since that game I played, and I've always believed that anything can happen in football. But I, th I do think if you were, you know, apply yourself and, and you do what's asked of you and you don't switch off and you're 100% focused and do your job, if you do that as a collective unit, you'll get the outcome that you've set out to do. And that was what the Wales result brought. Um, disciplined, honest performance by the lads. And if they do that in Denmark, like I said, they'll, they'll keep that tie alive. And in Dublin, you know, I'd like to see Martin, you know, stay in the game. And, um, you know, we're Kane and Mourinho at the minute, aren't we? But it's, I'm thinking very Mourinho tactics, very much like the, he did against Spurs. You know, you stay in the game, first half, 45 minutes, strangle the game, and be a bit more adventurous, a bit more enthusiastic in the second half and see what it brings. I've borrowed five euros off Roy Keane. You've got to put it on. He'd want that back. He'd want <laughs> he, will, back. he will want it back. Yeah. You've got to win. So where, where would you put it? What would you put it on? If I had five euros, where would I put it on the overall result? Yeah. Oh. Um, do you know what? I've got to be completely honest. My heart says the Republic of Ireland. My head, statistically, with what they've got, would say Denmark. But it's a playoff. It's like a cup final. Anything can happen. Form book goes out the window. Cliche central, that, isn't it? Um, Splinters, I'd say. Yeah, it, oh, it's such a tough one to call. I would go, I would go, Ireland, Nicky, 2-1 in Dublin after a 0-0 in Copenhagen. 